Hi, I'm Lisa from Australian travel and migration blog, dreamingofdanender.com. Today I'm going to talk about things to do in Brisbane. I live in Sydney, but I spent a year living in Brisbane as an exchange student. That was the first time I ever came to Australia. And I've also been back a couple of times in the last few years. There's quite a lot of things to do there. It's a really interesting city. It's on the east coast of Australia, so it's on the very popular road trip route from Sydney up to Cairns. It's also got quite a mild temperature, so it's really nice to visit at any time of year. Brisbane isn't a beach city, but it does have lots of things to do. So if you're thinking of visiting there, here are my recommendations. Number one is to visit South Bank. This is an area just across the river from the city. It's got a man-made lagoon and beach, so it's really good fun for kids. It's got lots of cafes and restaurants. They have events on there. It's got some nice art galleries and it's really nice just to walk along the riverside area there. It's got really lovely gardens as well and a nice little rainforest boardwalk. And it's also got the really big Brisbane sign that you've probably seen on Instagram and places. Here's my picture, but somebody was altering it when I was there. You can either walk there from the city across a bridge or you can get the ferry across. Number two is to take a day trip or weekend trip to Morton Island. I went on this trip last time I visited Brisbane last year. It was really, really lovely. It's a 90 minute ferry ride from Brisbane and it's the third largest sand island in the world. It's really beautiful. I bought a ferry ticket that included access to Tangaluma Resort, so you can use the swimming pools there and the restaurants and things. Also from there when you get off the ferry you can just walk along the beach and go and look at the Tangaluma wrecks, they're very interesting. Or you can hire kayaks to go and see them or go snorkelling around there. You can do lots of activities or join a tour. If you want to stay over there, you can either stay at the resort or there's quite a few campsites if you're self-sufficient. I wish I'd actually gone on a tour instead of just going over on the ferry because all there was really to do in the winter was walk from the resort to the wrecks, but there are lots and lots of activities and there's also quite a lot to see on the island, so I think it would have been nice to do a tour. If I can see some good ones, I'll link to them below. Number three is to have coffee down one of Brisbane's laneways. So Melbourne is the city that's really famous for its little laneways with all the nice coffee shops. But actually Brisbane has quite a few too. I went to a really nice one in Fortitude Valley called Bakery Lane that was nice. In the city you could try Eagle Lane or Albert Lane or Burnett Lane. Number four is to go on a day trip to the Gold Coast. It's only about an hour by train or by car from Brisbane. So even though Brisbane doesn't really have its own beaches, you've got amazing beaches at the Gold Coast and they're really, really close to Brisbane. Surfers Paradise is probably the most well-known place in the Gold Coast and it's the place that has all the big skyscrapers along the front. You've got loads of good shops there, lots of nice surf brands, you've got restaurants, nightlife, but also if you prefer somewhere a bit quieter, there's lots of other places too. So I quite like Burley Heads, that was a little bit hippie-ish and you can go and sit on the hill at sunset and watch all the surfers that's got a really nice atmosphere. I did a river cruise which was really really nice there's lots of waterways around the Gold Coast but you can also go up Sky Point Observation Deck which is amazing it's a really really tall building and you can see right across the ocean you can see across the hinterland that's really amazing I went at sunset time. I'll link to my itinerary for the Gold Coast below. Number five is to ride the CityCat Ferry. So Brisbane is known as the River City in Australia and it's quite a cheap way to get around if you don't want to book onto a cruise or something. But you can go um, up to the university, you can go in the opposite direction from the city, you can go to South Bank. So it's just a really nice way to get around the city. Number six is to visit the Sunshine Coast. So this is about an hour and a half north of Brisbane and that's got really amazing beaches too. It's a bit less built up than the Gold Coast and it's got a really relaxed feel and it's got a really holiday vibe to it too. I went to Noosa which is a really well known place. It's got lovely sort of hotels and some restaurants along the beach. It's got a strip of restaurants and shops and things kind of behind the beach so it, it really does feel like a holiday town. You can do a lovely walk through the National Park as well, it's beautiful, and just visit lots of the little towns and beaches along the coastline. I did a sunset cruise along the waterways, that was amazing, from Noosa, and also Umundi markets are really nice, they're absolutely huge, I think they're on the weekends. Number seven is to head up to Mount Kutha Summit. At the bottom you've got botanic gardens which are really big and really really pretty you've got a planetarium there as well and if you go up to the summit you can go by bus or you can drive i think you can probably hike too um, you've got amazing views and there's also the summit restaurant and bar there so it is a really nice place to go and look out across brisbane number eight is to visit roma street parklands 
I'd somehow never been here before, I think, when I lived in Brisbane, but it's it's right in the city next to Roman Street Station. It's really big parklands. You've got nice sort of water features. You've got little paths. You've got flower gardens. You've got a cafe there. It's a really pretty area and very close to the city. So if you want to spend a day just exploring the city, it's quite easy to get to. Number nine is to visit the Riverside Sunday City Markets. So there's more botanic gardens down next to the city. They're on the riverside, so it's a really lovely area just to walk along the water. The markets have got food and clothes and all sorts of things. That's a really nice place to visit on the weekend. Number 10 is to climb the cliffs at Kangaroo Point. This area is just east of South Bank and you've got sort of cliff faces, so you can go and obviously you have to be supervised, but you can go and climb or abseil the cliffs. You can also just go on a nice walk along the river, along the Natural History Trail, or there's nice restaurants there too. It's quite a nice suburb. Number 11 is to go on a trip to North Stradbroke Island. You can easily get the ferry across there and you can get a bus around the island as well, so it's really easy to get about. I went up to Point Lookout, which has a few little cafes and there's a really nice walk along North Gorge as well, so I'd recommend that as the top place to go to. Other places you could visit are Sill in the Beach or Amity Point. Just be careful when you get the bus because it stops at quite a lot of places and I ended up getting off because almost everyone else was getting off and it was just one big group of people going to a resort so I had to walk quite a long way to Point Lookout. <laughs> Number 12 is to eat in Chinatown, that's in Fortitude Valley. If you go to Duncan Street there's lots of restaurants there from different Asian countries so that's a really nice place for a night out. Number 13 is to have a night out in Fortitude Valley. That's the big entertaining district in Brisbane and it's got lots of nightclubs, lots of bars. It's also nice in the day just for cafes and restaurants. But if you want a really big night out, the valley is probably the place to go. Number 14 is to visit Lone Pine Koala Sanctuary. You can get there on a cruise. It's the oldest and largest koala sanctuary in the world. And there's also lots of other Australian animals if you want to go and check out the native wildlife. Number 15 is to dine at Eagle Street Pier. There's lots of really nice restaurants here and it's right on the water side so it's got a really nice atmosphere. Also you can go just for breakfast or lunch or if you just want to go for a coffee. It does look really amazing at night when all the buildings light up across the river. Number 16 is to go shopping at Queen Street Mall. This is right in the city and there's over 700 different retailers so really great if you want a day out shopping. If you want to spend the day exploring the city you can walk to South Bank or the Botanic Gardens from there as well. Number 17 is to explore Brisbane by bike. So you can hire bikes from City Cycle, which has about 150 stations where you can pick them up from and drop them off across the city. So you could go along the riverside, there's a walk and cycle path along most of the river. So that's a really nice way to explore. That's it for my things to do in Brisbane. Even though it's not a beach city there, there's still lots of things to do. I actually think they've created more things to do around the river because it doesn't have beaches. So it is an interesting city to visit. Check out my video on Sydney compared to Brisbane if you want to learn more about the city. Maybe you're thinking of moving there. And let me know in the comments if you're thinking of visiting or moving to Brisbane or if you live there and you've got other great things to do there. And please like and subscribe for more videos on life in Australia. Thanks for watching.